Hi there, welcome to Michigan Weekend. I'm Fred Trost and this evening I have a special guest. We're going to talk about bass fishing. Now the principles he's going to teach us about bass fishing are rather unusual. He's going to take us to a crowded, busy lake in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the day, the heat of the day. We're going to fish in shallow water in lily pads. Believe me, he says this technique pays off, and it does. The fisherman we're going to be with is Bob Musselman, a noted fishing instructor, fisherman from the Kalamazoo area. Bob has caught many big bass in shallows, haven't you, Bob? For example, this stringer here, how many of these came from the shallows? All five of them, Fred. Wow, how, what's the biggest one? Uh, here's an eight pound, seven ounce bass. Good grief. Find out exactly how he does it, stay tuned. We'll be right back to find out how Bob Musselman catches those seven and eight pound lunkers in shallow water in just one minute. First, this message from Meyer Thrifty Acres. If you want to get into jogging, you need a good pair of jogging shoes. And I don't mean a cheap pair of tennis shoes either. You need to buy something at least like this. This jogging shoe has cushion insole with an arch support. That's for the well-being of your feet. And the suede leather upper is durable and lightweight. Admire, these usually sell for $14.94, but this week, $4 off. Only $10.94 a pair. Check out these and other specials on jogging shoes this week in the shoe department at Meyer. Catching lunker bass in Michigan, you say? Look at these fish right here. These bass were caught, these five of them are the largest bass that Bob Musselman has caught in his career as a fisherman here in Michigan. Bob, what's this, what is the range in size of these fish? They range from seven pounds up to this one, which is eight pounds and seven ounces. Wow, spread. all of these master angler trophies. Uh, it's unbelievable that these were caught in southern Michigan. Uh, many people think they were caught in Florida, but I, I, I can I, attest to the fact they were caught in Michigan. Okay, now your technique that you use for catching a lot of these is interesting. You use a casting reel with what pound test line? That's 12 pound test, Fred. 12 pound, and then of course when I fished with you, when you introduced me to this technique, we used this pork rind frog. And it's an interesting technique that you have, Bob. Why don't we go to the film of the day that uh, I spent down in southern Michigan fishing with you on your 14 foot bass boat. There we were right in the midst of the lily pads. And you say this is, this is where you can find big bass. That's the best place to find them, right in the middle of the day. And the thing is, is we were fishing in the middle of the summer. That's right. July, August. Fishing with these casting reels, of course a lot of people nowadays like to go to the spin cast and so on, but a casting reel has, a, has an advantage in pulling the pork rind frog through the lily pads, doesn't it? It does. You have a direct drive with it and you have uh, the ultimate control with that type of a reel. Now I got to admit, Bob, we're going to go to the conversation that you and I had in the boat as you introduced me to this technique, but as we fish there in the, <laughs> the heat of the day, water skiers zipping behind us, honestly it just didn't seem right. Okay, Bob, um, this is where we're supposed to fish, huh? This is it, Fred. Okay, I only see four problems. <laughs> Things I've read about bass fishing before, how you're supposed to do it. Here we are in the heat of the summer, number one, right in the middle of the summer. We're here at noon in the middle of the day. Right. You have us here in about three feet of water. The bass are supposed to be out in the deep water. And number four, this lake is, a, is built up, residential. There must be a million people using it. H how are we going to catch bass? Fortunately, Fred, hardly anyone fishes in these thick lily pads. <laughs> it's no wonder. <laughs> They've been reading the same articles I have. Well, we have a method that we use uh, in the lily pads. You can't just use any old lure in here because oh, you're going to get hung up. Sure. So we use that little pork frog that I was showing you. Okay, well, show me how you do this you, with, okay. with a casting reel. All right, fine, with a casting right. reel. We make very short casts, maybe 20. 25 foot cast, mm -hmm. and the frog lands on a lily pad because there's very little water there. Okay. We start working that, and we see those little pockets of water, and we want to get that to drop into the pocket of water so the bass can at least get at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's sitting on a lily pad now, and I'm going to slip that into the water. Now, if there was a big bass there, he would have hit that, Fred, but there's no big bass right there. Well, so that's how you work it very slowly. Uh, slip it off the pads. They think it's a frog, and a uh, frog is a good meal for them, and that's what they want. Here, okay. try it, Fred. Let me give it a fling. Boy, I like these new bait casting reels. Yes. Grip it right out there without a backlash. Okay, just work it over. But explain to me, Bob, why everything I've read says that bass are not found in the shallow water in the heat of the day in the middle of the summer. They're out in the deep water. Many bass are out in the deep water, but as you can see, this type of weed cover is very thick. Mm -hmm. 
and it's so thick in fact that there's very little water showing. It looks like uh, you and I can almost get out there and, and do some walking. Mm -hmm. for <clears throat> the bass will lie under here because there's almost an unlimited supply of food. There, there are schools of minnows, there's lots of insects, and many people don't realize this, but bass eat insects. Mm -hmm. They eat what we call aquatic insects, which will cling to the stems of these lily pads. Dragonflies and such? An overrun there. Well, for it, uh, uh, that's all right. No big deal. Sure. <laughs> uh, and the bass will be near their food supply because they don't want to have to go halfway across the lake to get a meal. The meal mm -hmm. is right there for them. They have plenty of shelter from the sun. They don't have eyelids like you and I, and they're very sensitive to the sun. And as you can see by this thick pad cover here, if the bass are under there, they're in the shade. Mm -hmm. And another thing, the water is very cool under there. The sun's rays aren't penetrating down through there to warm up the water. So what you're saying is, Bob, that this offers all the protection, all the food that the deep water does for the bass, right? That, that's right, and it's easier to find the fish here. Except it's sort of a pain to fish it. Well, yes, but uh, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. When you catch an eight-pound bass out of here, Fred, you're never going to complain that's... about the fact that it's a pain to fish it. <laughs> right. <laughs> or even a four-pounder, I think we'd settle for. I'll take that. So this is, how, how do we know when to move on? When we've covered an area, how long do we sit Well, here? we don't cover an area very thoroughly. We will fan our casts mm -hmm. so that we're not going to cast in the same spot every time. And once we've fanned our casts within the radius uh, of our casting distance, then we will move on. Move on, okay. Uh, about 50 feet or so, and then fan our casts in that area. What lure are you going to be using? In here? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to be using the same thing you are, Fred. Okay. That's well, about the only thing that we can use in these real heavy lily pads. Why don't we move up another 50 feet and do sure, it to it? Sure, let's see do that. Can, Fine. See what we've come up with. Well, that was our conversation, Bob. You remember that? That day I was a bit skeptical out amongst the lily pads. But I tell you, it's always fascinating fishing with you. Your knowledge is incredible about Thank bass. And, but not only that, your ingenuity, for example, on that bass boat. I don't think uh, really our viewers could see uh, all the features of that boat. So what we're going to do, Bob, is we're going to come back, and, and before we get into to the bass and the fish, we're going to talk about that bass boat in just a minute. But first, here's a message from the Sporting Goods Department at Meyer Thrifty Acres. I've always said if you want to learn about bass fishing from somebody who knows, you've got to find some guy who catches seven and eight pound bass for fun. Ask him those questions. That guy's sitting right here, Bob Musselman. Bob, you're just a font of knowledge when it comes to bass fishing, but I've really been impressed by the equipment and the things you've developed on your bass boat, inexpensively. Now, obviously, it doesn't take a eight or $10,000 bass boat to catch bass, right? It's not necessary at all, Fred. For a very small investment, you can tailor a boat, make it the way you want it, so it'll be comfortable for you. Okay, your boat is just a 14-footer, just a, a regular fishing boat, right? That's right. You, have, you put a modest motor on the back, 25 horse, and from there, what, you put eight, $800 or so into it? About that much, yes, Fred. A, a homemade bass boat. And you have all the luxuries, I think, of a big, fancy, expensive boat. I sure do, and I can get in the shallow water, whereas those big boats can't. Well, let's go back for the benefit of our audience to that day that we were fishing beside the lake and let you give us a tour of your homemade bass boat. The motor, well, this is an electric motor, has a 12 volt battery, and this little doodad here is a weed guard. Mm -hmm. And this allows us to go through very heavy weed cover, for instance, through lily pads. Without this, the weeds would get around the prop and, and the motor would go nowhere. Okay, well, let's look at some of the other features you have here on your, on your homemade customized bass boat. Let's see. What's in here? Is this your... Well, that's the 12-volt uh, okay. battery, which operates the electric motor. Uh -huh. And then I have a couple of... Uh, Little buoys you throw out when you catch a fish? So that's you know right. Where... That's okay. right, to mark the spots. Okay, now what about these characteristic seats here on a bass boat? Did these come with this boat? Uh, no, they didn't. Those are uh, custom seats that I had. So you made. put in you put in the seats? Yes, I did. How much do those run? Oh, they run about $35 a piece. They're, mm -hmm. they're a cushioned seat with a fold-down back on them. Okay. Uh, what about these railings here? I had those installed so that uh, if I tie up to a dock, I can tie very easily to this. Okay. Now you store your lures in this little foam, foam padding. Geez, they come out and hang in there real easily. That's right. I take these lures out before I start fishing. Uh, I don't like to open a tackle box in the boat. It makes mm -hmm. noise. So I take the lures out and 
all of the lures that I figure I'll fish with that day, I will line up on this foam. Super idea, super idea. Well, what about the carpeting? This, uh, I assume that's in there for noise? That's right. It's for noise and to keep from slipping. Sometimes the bottom of a boat will get very slippery, especially if you've caught some fish and they've been flopping around. So we put carpeting on there to deaden the noise, to deaden the sound, so we don't scare fish and also to keep from slipping down on the boat. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that couldn't have cost much to make those improvements. What about your rod racks here? Well, I like to have my rods out of the way, tucked out of the way. We can store them here. I store them here all the time, even when I'm not using the boat in, on a fishing trip. And uh, they, they can hold six rods. I have three in there now. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. You mounted the little ruler here so you can measure your fish. That's right. That's glued down. What about the console? Uh, is, did this come with the boat? No, it didn't. Uh, I bought that separately, and that's an electric start uh, console. Mm -hmm. We can operate from the middle seat here. Okay, well let's move on down here, see what else we have. What's in here? That's just a storage compartment, Fred. And sometimes if we're uh, pike fishing, catch some long pike, we'll put those in here also. All right, you could use that as a, a cooler probably to take some cold drinks out on the boat with you. And your motor, just a modest 25 horse, not like those big 85s or uh, some of the big ones they use on the expensive bass boats. That's right. Electric start, here's your battery. Okay, what do we have uh, under this compartment? What's this? Well, that's our live well, Fred. And I've installed a, uh, a little thing there that allows the water to come in from the lake so we have circulating water to okay. keep the fish alive. Okay, the fish that you catch. You don't use it for bait. That's right, the fish that we catch. Okay. That's a, did you, did it come with that plug? No, it didn't. You installed that too? Yes, I did. Golly, okay, you have your life preservers here a net for all those big bass. And finally, let's look at this anchor reel you have here, Bob. Uh, so one man, I assume, you can operate this yourself when you're fishing. Oh yes, and, it's, and it stores the line on it. How does it work? Well, you see that little black thing there? Okay. Give yeah. that a twist, Fred. Whoop! <laughs> okay, so you let your anchor down and what, just crank it up? Just crank it right back up. Oh, that is now, handy. Now see how that nests in there. Look at that, isn't that something? That's right. Gotta try that again. Whoop. Boy, that's simple. That is handy. Well, Bob, you've really done a number on this bass boat. How much would it cost for a guy to buy a 14-foot boat like this to customize it the way you've done? Oh, I would say about $800 altogether, including the extras that I have on the boat. Not including the motor, Fred. Right. Well, that's quite a deal. Quite a handy tip from Bob Musselman, who's figured out how an average fisherman can uh, make a bass boat for himself that has all the luxuries you'd ever want and it doesn't have to cost you eight or ten grand. Well, I'm sure, Bob, that will be inspiring to a lot of fishermen out there who would like the conveniences of a bass boat. How do you summarize? Do people ask you, why do you have to have a bass boat? How do you summarize the advantages of it? Okay, a boat like mine uh, has a very shallow draft, Fred. Mm -hmm. It draws maybe four inches of water, and that means that I can get in the shallow areas like we've been fishing on the film there. Uh, also, the high seats will give you a better advantage of seeing down into the water. You have a better visibility factor mm -hmm. there. The electric motor is a must. Oh yeah, that's nice. That'll get you through the weeds, and you saw that I had a weed guard on that motor. That'll get you through any kind of water. Now that doesn't catch your fish though, but we're going to be back <laughs> in just a minute. Find out how Bob Musselman catches those lunkers after this message from the Sporting Goods Department at Meyer. Well, Bob Musselman, I got to admit, you implanted ideas in my head of maybe catching seven and eight pound bass out in those lily pads. How, how often does that happen? Oh, maybe once a season, Fred. I catch a big one like that, but you usually catch bass, don't you? Oh, yes. Well, I can attest to that, that day that we were out there fishing with the pork rind frogs in the lily pads, we did catch bass, and this is what our action was like. Oh, okay. Got one, Bob. Oh, look at this. He's hung up in the weeds. There we go. Look, look, uh, grab him by the lip? Grab, grab him by the lower lip. Okay. Grab him by the lower lip with thumb and forefinger. There we go. Okay, you got it. That's not well, he's a little bad. devil. I think we should throw that one back. Throw this one back? Yeah. Yeah, he's a little devil, but you're right there in here. How big of a, how big of a bass are you caught in these little pads like this? In the, over eight pounds. Wow. In, in this particular spot, yes. It's incredible. Now, what, I, I must have done all right setting the hook. You did. Hey, you did real well. Yep. You, boy, I can see I can hardly get this hook out of this guy's mouth. 
Yeah, I'd let him go, Fred. Let, well, let, him, let him grow up. There he goes. Well, let's go back and get another one, get something a little bigger. Oh, wow. You got him? He hit pretty close, didn't he, Bob? Yeah, he did. Well, well, he couldn't have been more than, what, 15 feet from the boat. We're going to use the old, the old bottom lip method here. Sure. We'll end up in the emergency room in the hospital. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's a nice little bass. Sure. Sure. That's a keeper. Well, geez, Bob, you're, uh, <laughs> you're proving they're in here. You going to put him in the bait box or in the uh, Why don't I just release him and, and let okay. you fellas see him get uh, there. Bye-bye. Look at this. We got a little rain and you got a little fish. But you could, you're using a crankbait or a, a spinner bait. Spinner bait. Yeah. Oh, and now the rain's coming down. What do you think? Is this rain going to help fishing? Uh, yes, it should. It, it, it should help. Great. Well, let's get him in. Well, again, not a bad one and caught in the lily pads. Oh, that rain's coming down now. That's a nice little bass. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's uh, let him grow. Well, Bob, you remember that day, don't you? I sure do, Fred. And, and I, did, you heard me, or I heard you say there that this, this rain might help the fishing. Right. I love to fish in the rain. Well, I tell you, we hightailed it, though. That rain really came down. That was a bad storm that came up that day, Fred. You really can't afford to be out on the lake with a, a thunderstorm. It gets a little dangerous, and that rain came down like cats and dogs. But you would normally stay out if it was sprinkling or just moderate rain? The only thing that scares me is the lightning. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that scared us. Now you can see here, the look on your face, a bit concerned, the wind was kicking up, and there's Bob Bishop right behind you, our faithful cameraman who filmed most of this. He's trying to keep his gear dry, <laughs> get things put together as quickly as possible. That's one thing about Southern Michigan. You know, when we left just a couple hours earlier, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was hot weather. We were worried about getting sunburned and we all left our rain ponchos in the car. That's right. Uh, that's one lesson you should learn is le never leave that rain suit in the car. That's a lesson we should learn, but why didn't we? We know that. Boy, what a day that was. Well, Bob, uh, looks like we <laughs> took on a little water here. We sure did, about three inches of water, Fred. We're crying out loud. Well, we got blown off the lake, but uh, you showed me that you can catch bass in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, in three feet of water. You sure can. That's terrific. Well, we're going to have to uh, go back after him in uh, oh, a few weeks, try some of those crankbaits and see what we can do with that. We'll do that. And here is one of these little crankbaits that we were just talking about, Bob. No mystery why they're called crankbaits, is it? No, there isn't, Fred. You just crank that reel as fast as you can turn the handles. And, of course, that lure digs down under the water. Well, while we go to the film in just a few seconds here, showing the day that we used the crankbaits, let's talk to Don Stevens also. Don, you're from the Michigan chapter of the National Bass Association. Yes, I am. Right, and you sort of represent them public relations-wise, getting new members and new affiliate clubs. The bass anglers I know have an awful lot of tournaments every year, even in Michigan. Yes, they have, our chapter federation has at least six tournaments a year, and if you belong to clubs, you can fish at least six more, which could put you in the 12 weekends a year. Then these tournaments basically are catch and release, right? You don't they keep are, the fish and kill them. Our main objective is the catch and release, and do not kill your catch. That's what we really try to get into that, do not kill your catch. So bass fishing, in summary, is really sport fishing, especially from the standpoint of the clubs. As sport fishing, yes, our main purpose is to promote bass fishing as a major sport. Mm -hmm. And next would be to support the local DNR in their efforts of um, enforcing their laws and the clean up the lakes and club efforts. And um, just so on, as being in a club would be to help develop new fishing techniques, the use of new tackle, and mm -hmm. especially boating safety. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, that's very good. And of course, you're looking for members Looking yes. for clubs, formation of clubs, and here, well, look at this. Bob Musselman ties into a scrappy little bass there. That was a nice one, Bob. That was a nice bass, Fred. That's a keeper for sure. 
Although I noticed you sure, sure do toss a lot back. Of course, you're used to catching those big ones. That's right. I couldn't possibly eat all the ones I catch. And here's a technique which is very useful. Out in drifting out in water, what we were fishing 10 feet deep. We were fishing in 10 feet of water, and that's a marker buoy that I just mm -hmm. threw out there. And that'll help us stick to that area because there might be other largemouth right in the lo locality. Well, that was a nice one. It's a dandy bass. There it is, the buoy. Now, here's another technique that you were showing me, Bob, where you really thrust your rod right down in the water to maybe work it a little deeper. I wanted that crankbait to run deeper, so I put the rod down in the water, and that gives me two or three two or three feet more depth, mm -hmm. Fred. And that, as we see, caught you a nice pike. Well, Don, let's get to the address where people can write if they want more information. Yes, the address is the Michigan Bass Federation, Box 224, Oshtemo, Michigan. And I will personally answer any letter, and I will, within a 50-mile radius of your home, I will write you and tell you where you, the Closest clubs are in your area. Yeah, well, that's great. And we'll, we'll flash that address up at the end of the show again. But that bass fishing can really be an outstanding sport. Uh, bass clubs are becoming predominant. And, of course, Bob Musselman attests to the fact that there's lots of big bass. We'll be right back to finish up this edition of Michigan Weekend after this message from Meyer Thrifty Acres.